Hello, brothers and sisters and sisters and brothers. This is your girl, Sister TV. And baby, have I got the most amazing story for you. First, I want to apologize for not being here and making videos in a long time, but things have been hectic. We'll get to it later. But first, I don't know um, if I've talked about this before, but one of the, the person uh, in my life who has influenced me and who I love more than anything is the fabulous Miss O. You don't grow up um, as a child of the 80s, 90s, you know, in you don't grow up as a young black girl in Chicago in my age range and not understand the magnitude and the fabulous that is uh, my beloved Miss Oprah. Um, I've loved Oprah forever. Every time we drive by, I clap and scream. I just love everything about Oprah. I could go on about it forever and ever, but you know, the point is, is I love Oprah and I love everything that Oprah has done and stands for. I know a lot of people feel a lot of ways about Oprah, but for me, as someone who has lived in the city of Chicago and has followed her for years and who Oprah has been an amazing inspiration, a constant in my life, and someone who I look up to, look toward, and respect greatly. I don't know that woman from anybody, but what she has done um, for women, Black women, for humankind has been amazing, and for that I am forever grateful. But on April 20th, um, of this year, Oprah gave me yet another reason to be forever grateful. I knew that I needed to be there. I knew that it was the last season. I didn't know how. I didn't know when, but I knew that I needed to be there and speak to my mama, Oprah. Um, so uh, thankfully, my sister-in-law, she applied and she got tickets. Um, April 20th, we're going. Now, the thing is, is when she sent me that email or called me that morning and said, oh, my God, the Oprah people email me back. We got tickets because I didn't get tickets. My mom and nobody got tickets, but she got the ticket. It didn't feel real to me. I was like, could this really be true that I would be going to see Oprah? Like I go hard in the paint for Mama Oprah. So to be able to be at one of the last uh, the last tapings of her show was amazing to me. And I didn't know why it was, I mean, obviously it's amazing just to be in the audience and be in her presence, but I knew in my spirit that something was going to happen. Was she going to give me a car? Was she going to give me a house? Was she going to look at me and be like, that's Sister TV. Sister TV need her own TV show. Let's give her own. Like, you know, something big was going to happen. Um, Because I feel so deeply connected to Oprah as a person. Um, when I was younger, there was a lot of craziness in my household. My parents and my people did the best that they could, and I appreciate them so much. But Oprah was the constant for me. Oprah was the help. Oprah was the motivation, the spirit, and the push that I would need every day. I watched Oprah religiously. My mother used to tape Oprah for me. I thank my mother for loving Oprah as much as she did because she passed that on to me. And she also passed on that knowledge that Oprah did it. You can do it. Anyway, so we're going on April 20th. So I, I've been in denial, y'all. I didn't think about it. You know, I'm going to see Oprah, right? I should have been having an outfit planned out together. What is we going to do? But I was in like, I don't know. I was in such a goofy space about it that I didn't really even like let my, like, because I just didn't think it was going to happen, you know. Um, I, I just I couldn't grasp that I would actually be going to see Oprah. So um, finally, the day came and... I, um, the day before, I was running all over like, Lord, have mercy, what am I going to wear? I'm going to Oprah. You know, uh, you'll hear this later, but when I had the twins, my feet grew two sizes. And the twins are now two, but this fool, Sister TV, has yet to go and purchase any shoes that actually fit her. Except for one pair. I got like two, like gym shoes. I mean like nice shoes, right? So I got one pair of fabulous red shoes that fit me and work good, but I didn't have anything red and really cute enough to go see my mama Oprah in. But I made it work because you know what I do. So um, I went to Oprah, I had my big red flower in my hair. 
And I know y'all see me on YouTube acting foolish and y'all don't know me in real life. But some of you watching may actually don't be real life. You know, I'm really silly. I'm filled with joy and excitement about life. Really, like seriously, I really love being alive. I really do try to enjoy myself and laugh and have a wonderful time. So the day comes and we're going. I tried to make a sister TV video in the car on the way there, but my phone is a freaking hater and cut the video off. Um, but I was looking good, y'all. Ooh, we I better work. Um, I'll put a picture for y'all to see. So then And so we get there and it's me. I'm going to my sister-in-law's. I have a sister-in-law named Anna and a sister-in-law named um, uh, Melissa. And we were all going to see Oprah. Me, Anna, and Melissa are going to see Oprah and Melissa's mother. So when we get there, like just pulling into the parking lot and looking across at Harpo Studios is enough to sort of push me over the edge and begin to start weeping. But I sort of was pulling it together. So when we walk in, when you walk into the thing, there's a, um, <laughs> there's like a, like an awning, like you walk in, like you're inside, but outside really, but it's like to protect you from rain and stuff as you wait in line to go into the actual building. So as we come in there, you know, I'm on Facebook and Twitter and uh, Foursquare and Yelp and just checking in. I'm checking in Oprah Winfrey Studio. This is a TV at Oprah Winfrey Studio. Going to meet my mama. I just like really like that morning on my Facebook, I put, I really want to sing. She's your queen to be. Like when she come right out, like I was just going to start sweet singing. Like <laughs> she's your queen to be and Oprah for forever. You know, just really overexcited and plain stupid. <laughs> but that's the kind of stuff. So anyway, so I'm on my phone and I'm checking in. I'm trying to take pictures of me and the Oprah side, you know, because I'm here to see my mama. You, you understand? You, you see, I came. So the security guard, uh, the lady walks up to me. She said, no phones. You got to turn off. I said, listen here. I said, I said, listen here. I have come here today to see my mama. So you need to come and get in this picture with me. <laughs> because today, something amazing is going to happen to me. And you're going to want to say, you, you was with the girl that Oprah saw. I was like, oh my God, it's my long lost daughter. I've been waiting on you. Okay. So the security guard and I were cracking up laughing about that or whatever. So we go in and we take the, uh, we turn off my phones and I go through the line or whatever. And admittedly, everyone was remarking on the fabulous bigness of the hair work and the fabulousness of the flower work. Uh, <laughs> me, I better work. I, I, I just better work. Okay. So, um, so anyway, we go in, we get up there. When you go out in the open show, there's like this like holding area for the audience upstairs. And at the beginning of the, the thing, they always, so they start calling people down. When they call people down, they call you by name. So if you get your name called, right, if you get your name called, um, you know, you're going to sit in the front row. So, you know, everybody's on the edge of their seat to get their names called. So they call everybody's name. And, you know, every time they say a name, I'm like, oh, Jesus, it's us. Let's get up. Let's get up. But it's not us. So we stayed there and we were not called. So we knew we weren't going to get the best seats in the house. But for me, it still didn't matter. Like, I just knew something good was coming to me in this moment. This space that uh, it's, it, is in, it is in divine order that I will be in that audience on this day to see this show with Miss O. Um, and and something good was going to happen. Something amazing was going to happen. And I don't know if it was my spirit that willed it to happen or if it was God or a combination of the two, which is probably, which, no, excuse me, which is exactly what it was, is between my will, God, and the universe. When you want something good, when you make a decision, the universe and everything in it will rise up to meet you in that moment. So in that moment, it didn't matter if they had put me outside that studio, if they had put me on the roof. I knew somehow, some way, I was there for something bigger than just to see the show. Now, the show was about Rob Lowe, who is amazingly attractive. Um, he came out and we were all like, 
Like, he's just really cute. Like, his face looks good. Like, sometimes you see somebody who's famous and you're like, ooh, it don't really work out too good in real life. But he really looks great. So he came out and did the show and the show was great or whatever. We had a really good time. Um, if you watch the show, you can see my leg. I just was so wrapped up in it that I wasn't even sitting straight. They And the lady in front of me asked Rob Lowe a question and I'm right behind her. You can see my, I have, I'm not wearing them. I usually wear my little silver braces, but you can see my ring and you can see my leg. I'm sitting low goofy like but you could see it you could see me um so and she just started talking and um first of all when she came out i wanted to die like she walked out there and i was like it's my mama like, i just could not get it together i love oprah I don't feel bad about it. I am a fan forever. I am one of those people who would stand outside in the rain, who would sleep on the floor to see Mama O. Like, I would, I love me some Oprah. I am an ultimate viewer. Like, um, I didn't send in for any of that stuff, but I really am an ultimate viewer because I didn't send in because I knew I would go there on Oprah and act a mother sucking fool. So I didn't do it. So, um, anyway, Oprah starts talking to the audience. So she's telling us about how much she loves Chicago. I love Chicago. Um, she's telling us about how um, excited she was for the last show. I was excited for the last show. I'm just being stupid. Um, anyway, so she's talking about it. And then everybody starts, like, sort of yelling out questions to her. So they're yelling out questions like, what was one interview that you wanted to do? What was one thing or whatever? And then I realized that this was it. This was the moment for me to do whatever it is. Like, I didn't, I had no idea why I said what I said when I said it. Um, but everybody was yelling out questions. So we were sort of up in the, in like the upper bleachers. Look at my nails, Lord Jesus. We were up in the upper bleachers. If you watch the Oprah show, you see there's sort of levels. We were up in the bleachers off to the side behind Oprah's head. But during the show, Oprah kept turning around and sort of talking to her. And like several times, during the thing, my sister-in-law was like, Oprah's looking at you. And I was like, well, of course she is. Do you, have you seen me? <laughs> I was just like, you know, like, uh, whatever. I just, I don't know, whatever. It might just be crazy fan stuff, but I, I've, I really felt connected to Oprah. Anyway, so um, people were yelling out questions and the lady sort of in the lower ones down for me asked about her school in first. No, this is what happened first. Oprah um, asked what you were going to be doing for the final show and um, where people are going to be throwing parties. And at the time I was going to be throwing parties. I said, yes, I'm throwing a party. Um, she said, yes, people need to be with each other. And she turned around and I said, yes. I said, you know, and Oprah, you need to be with people too. You should just come to my house. And so she laughed um, and everybody in the audience laughed or whatever. And uh, she's like, oh no, I'm going to be here with my peeps in the studio. So then, um, so then everybody was sort of asking questions and the lady down below me had yelled out a question about um, her leadership academy in South Africa. So Oprah was saying that the girls were now going to prom and she didn't like it all hugged up. And so then I raised my hand. Now I kept my hand raised because, and my sister and my other sister, my Anna, was like, you just have to yell it out, just ask. And I kept my hand raised because, you know, I don't know why I kept my hand raised because I just felt like whatever I was going to say to Miss Oprah Winfrey, I needed her to acknowledge that she wanted me to say it. That it, she wanted, I needed her to know that, you know, what I just felt like I needed to raise my hand and be respectful of just, just not yelling, hey, Oprah. You know, I just couldn't do it. So I raised my hand. I was the only person who raised my hand. And I was the only person that Oprah actually picked to, you know, people were just yelling out questions. She was just answering. So then um, I raised my hand. And the lady down in front thought, when Oprah pointed for me to talk, the lady down in front, Oprah was like, no, no, the lady with the flower. That's me. That's me. That's me. That's me. She could have, she sent me the lady with the flower. Like, oh, snap. That's me. That's me. She asked me. So, so, um, I raised my hand and, um, I want to tell you that I, I wasn't, I didn't know what I was going to ask her, but I knew I, th I think maybe my mouth didn't know, my brain didn't know, but in my spirit, I sort of knew. Now, it's not like, you know, I could have, I felt like whatever I had asked her for, she would have given to me. Not just because she's Oprah or whatever, but I just felt in that, I, it sounds crazy. I, like maybe I'll be watching the video and think I'm a nut, but I just felt like in that moment, it was divine. And whatever I needed, 
was going, I was going to receive. And I realized that I could have asked her for anything in the world, but I didn't want to ask her for anything that I knew that I could provide for myself or would provide for myself. You know, I could have asked her, um, <laughs> could have asked her for a TV show. <laughs> I should have asked her for a TV show. I could have asked her for. I, I don't know. I just really felt like in that moment, whatever I said was going to be just fine. So I raise her. So she says me. So she picks me and I put my hand down. I'm like, oh my Lord. I said, you know, Oprah. Um, I said, I have loved you forever. And I have watched your show for such a very long time. And I've and I know that I've come here today and I need to ask you this. And if you say no, it's okay. Obviously, you're Oprah. You say whatever you want to say. Uh, so she's, you know, uh, you say whatever you want to say. I said, but Oprah, if I don't ask you this, I will never ever be able to live myself. And it's true. If I didn't ask her, I would have never ever been able to live with myself. So I said, Oprah. Please don't think I'm being disrespectful. And please, please take me. Um, I didn't say please, please. I just said, please, please uh, bear with me in this moment. But Oprah, can I have your shoes? <laughs> I asked Oprah Winfrey for her shoes. Now, the shoes she had on that day were outlandish. They were silver and, you know, just, you know how Sister TV, silver, sparkly, and fabulous. But I didn't expect her to take them shoes off her feet and give them to me. Now, if she had, I would have been just fine with it. Um, she also had come out in some um, slippers. And uh, she always does. Whenever she, she doesn't like to walk around in the heels, just like Sister TV. She doesn't like to walk around in the oh, just like Oprah. Um... She wears, so she had given me the slippers. That would have been more than enough. But I told her, I said, listen, I said, I, I just, I really cannot have your shoes. And everyone in the audience started screaming and laughing. My sister-in-law slapped me in the eye. I was like, oh my God, you just asked Oprah for her shoes. And I was like, oh no, girl, I know. And so then everybody's freaking out. Oprah said, oh, well, you know. I wear a size. And then I said, I know it's a size 10 and 11, girl. Over, I had twins and my feet grew two sizes. So I don't got no good shoes. I got this one pair of good shoes. And it's some, uh, <laughs> I got this one pair of good shoes. And I just need some more shoes. I said, but Oprah, please, can I have some of your shoes? And she looked at me. And she said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> She said, now listen, she said, like, I'm sitting there and I swear to you, I, like, I'm somewhere else. Like, this is like, this is TV, so now I'm sitting there, but like, realistically, like, I'm watching this mess from the couch. Like, can you believe this fool just asked Oprah for her shoes? Like, I'm freaking out. So, um, she said, she said, but I, I know just the shoes. She says, I, listen, first of all, let's just discuss that I, me, Sister TV is talking to Oprah. Like, I'm having a conversation with Mother O. Do you understand? Like, let's just, mm, thank you, Jesus. If she had said no, I would have been like, cool. Like, she talked to me. Um, <laughs> so then she says, she says, um, she says, I know. She said, now, I'm not going to give you these right here. I said, it's okay, it's okay, whatever. I don't care. She said, um, Lord, it was amazing, y'all. She says, um, I just, I feel hot just talking about it. She said, uh, <laughs> she said, um, are you ready? Yeah, sit down. Are you, sit down. She said, Ralph Lauren. Say what now? She said, Ralph, La I said, Lauren. Was it Lauren? I only see, I don't even know how to pronounce it. I don't get none of that fancy stuff. She said, Ralph Lauren had sent her the shoe. Say what now? She said, Ralph Lauren had sent her these shoes and she wore them to a gala or gala or something like this. And she knew that she was never going to wear them again. So she had put them off into the office or whatever. Like at this point, like I, I'm listening, but I'm like, like I, I hear angels and Jesus is singing and like, like Aretha Franklin and Glass and Night and the Pips is like, ooh, girl, you're going to get Oprah shoes. Like it was just like too much going on. <laughs> so then, um, 
Like, I just, uh-uh. So then, um, I just, wow, y'all, like, that really happened to me. So then she says, um, she said, Ralph Lauren has sent the shoes. So she said, they're black. Um, they're really great. And they're great. And Ralph Lauren sent them to me um, to wear. So then she said, her little assistant stylist purse, Lord, y'all, uh, assistant stylist purse, she said, okay, the shoes are here. Um, and everyone in the audience, is, I'm freaking out. I'm going into the ugly cry. I'm screaming about Jesus. Like, I'm telling her thank you. Um, and then, so then she sends the girl off. And I and I was just, I just really want to thank you so much for everything that you've done for me and us. And then I started crying. And then she says, she says, she's like, just like when she does, you get a car, you go. She's like, you, she gets the shoes. Like, you get a car, you get the shoes, you get the I got the shoes. So she sends the girl off to get the shoes. So she sends the girl off to get the shoes. And then we start like, um, so then I'm like, you know, freaking out. Other people in the audience are asking questions and everyone around me in the, in the, like the seats. We were all just nutting up in the seats around. <laughs> like everybody was slapping me. I was like, yes, girl. So then, <laughs> so then, um, Lord have mercy. So then, um, y'all, it was really great. I can't even thank Oprah enough. Um, so then the girl came back. She ain't had shoes. So then some other lady came and asked me for my address, which is fine. But um, we're moving. So I was like, are y'all going to send me the shoes? Because we're moving. And where are we going to send them? She's like, no, no, no. We just want your name and information in case you're a stalker or crazy or whatever. We need to hunt you down. No, no. <laughs> she said, they just wrote down. I just had to write down my name, information, my name, and describe what I was wearing or whatever. So I did that. So then um, if I, I guess Oprah told the girl again where the shoes were. So the girl ran across the street or whatever to get the shoes. And so then I'm sitting there, we're still talking, and, like, I still don't, like, I know, like, I, it's crazy to me that this is happening, but it's not. Do you understand? So the girl comes back, and she has a green Oprah show bag. And then she hands the, the bag. Everybody starts clapping. She hands the bag to Oprah. And I'm still sitting in my seat in the, in the thing or whatever. Because uh, first of all, I would have fell over trying to get out of the seat to, to touch Oprah. Like, I just, mm -mm. So, I wasn't trying to go, to, like, mm -mm, jumping on Oprah. It's just not attractive. So then, uh, <laughs> so then Oprah pulls the shoes. Oh, Lord, y'all. She pulls the shoes out the bag to show the audience. Like, again, this is all... Like real, like Oprah talked to me and said she was gonna give me something. If I had never seen the shoes, would have been cool. But Oprah is touching the shoes that she's going to give to me to take to my house and put on my feet. A deal with like, say what now? So Oprah takes the shoes out and they're gorgeous. Everybody else like ah. <laughs> we were nutting up. So then. <laughs> I'm so I like it's too much. Um, so then um, Oprah takes. I'm gonna start crying again. <laughs> Oprah takes the shoes, and she um, and she says, "Oh, Dean, you know Dean. Like if you watch Oprah, Dean, he's like the so Dean always brings. Uh, stop. Okay. She says um, she says Dean, bring me um." Can I, I'm going to sign them for her. So, um, <laughs> I don't know why I'm crying. Um, she said she was going to sign them for me. Um, and so then they went and got her a pen. And so she signed one and then the girl was taking it. She said, oh, no, no, wait, I'm going to sign the other one for her too. And this man, <laughs> it's this, um, it's this like 300, 400 pound man. Not to say, it was just this really big husky sort of um, like um, linebacker looking type dude, real tough guy in the back or whatever behind us. And then when Oprah said she, she said she's going to sign the other, she said, oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> it was like this big dude and he even understood like it was crazy that Oprah... Sign the shoes for me. So, um, oh, I'm, I'm like an idiot. Um, so, 
She signed the this, this when she signed the shoe, she asked me. <laughs> That's crazy that I'm Oprah was talking. Anyway, she asked me, she said, she said, What's your name? And baby, I had it the slightest eye. <laughs> she said, What's I was like, Lord, what is my freaking name? <laughs> she just like if I was like, hold like Oprah just I don't know what it is. <laughs> so then my sister in law slapped me and said, So what is your name? I said, My name is Sana. S E N M. It means God's gift to me. And then everybody honestly went, Ooh, like I I don't know why they did that, but everybody did. <laughs> anyway, so then Oprah was like, Oh yes. Like I, she just said she was like, Oh, like when I said my name, she's like, like everybody all this just sort of, you know, Oprah just shook her head, yes. And then she um she wrote oh my god she wrote um she I'm I'm like I just can't even get it together she wrote <laughs> she wrote on my shoes no she wrote on her shoes that she was giving to me uh, <laughs> to Sanam love Oprah Winfrey and she signed and she dated them and she blew my word. Um, so she put them back in the bag and she said, you know, this is what I always say. She said, I always say that you just ask for what you want and you will receive it. And I was like, and I'm sitting in the back like, yes, Oprah, I know that's you taught me. You taught me. That's why I asked. And it is a thousand million zillion gazillion percent true that the only reason that I knew that it would be okay to ask, even if I hadn't got it was because of Oprah. And the teaching and the sort of power that watching her show has put in me. And I am so thankful that she gave me that kind of confidence. That she gave me that kind of peace. That she gave me 25 years of... That she gave me 25 years of herself without even knowing that she was doing it uh, for a little fat black me <laughs> sitting on my couch wherever I was watching Oprah tell me that I was okay and that I was good that she gave me all that and then I could sit in her audience and then ask her for something more her shoes and she could give me that as well so I oh, so I'm so thankful to Oprah Winfrey every day, but I'm thankful today because I promise you that one day I'm going to do something amazing that would make Oprah proud while wearing them shoes. And I don't know, <laughs> I don't know when, and I don't know how, but I know that I will. And I don't even, um, <laughs> I don't, I can't, <laughs> I don't even, I can't, like, I'm just so, I'm so thankful. I'm glad that, um, I'm so glad that everyone in my life has um, given me the strength. I'm so glad for everything. I know it's just shoes. I know um, Oprah has a million shoes. And maybe she's, I know she's given shoes, or I know that there's other people who have gotten shoes, but it was what I needed because I know when I don't feel like I can or that I am I'm not worthy. When I don't feel like I'm worthy. I will know that Oprah looked a little on me sitting in her audience with my big old flower, my big old face. And granted me the request of her shoes. And listen, I know for some of y'all, you ain't gonna get it. But this ain't for you. This is for those who will get it. Oprah gave me her shoes. And I'm gonna walk in them. <laughs> okay, so I know you wanna see the shoes, right? Okay, where are the shoes? Like, I'm going to go get the shoes from my secret hiding place. <laughs> and I'm going to be back to show you the shoes. <laughs> First of 
all, let's discuss. Here are my fingers on the same bag that Oprah's fingers were on. Boom! Uh, <laughs> I better work, bitch. Um, you ready? Okay, so this is the green bag that they came in. So they on it. The funniest thing is when I came home, my husband saw me with the Oprah bag. He said, you bought something from the Oprah store? We can't afford that. <laughs> and I was like, nah, son. Me and Mama Ooh had a milk. You ready? Like, I feel like when the bag opens, like, maybe the light should just shoot. Woo! <laughs> just ridiculous. <laughs> can y'all see them good? Hold on, let me hold them up against the bag. So y'all can see them good. These are the shoes. This is the one that she wrote my name on. But if you can see, hold on, let me see. Maybe there it is. Tassam. I can't even say my name right. Tassanam Love Oprah Winfrey. As you can see, they are Ralph Lauren. They are fabulous. And they are mine. Baby! Um, I don't even know. They are my size. Size 11. Yes, my feet are big. My so Oprah's work. Uh, <laughs> um, this is the other one. April 20th, 2011. It took me so long to make the video because I just, um, I couldn't even, I still can't even wrap my head around it because it just, it just means so much to me. Like it may have, I don't know I'm going to put my back, hold my shoulders. Um, <laughs> it just, it, it was, it's amazing. It, it, it feels amazing. And I, I don't know why. I don't know, um, it just was what I needed in that moment, and I'm so thankful. Um, so she gave me the shoes, and then that was it. Then, you know, she said goodbye, and as she's walking out, I was sitting sort of in the middle of the aisle, but she walked out in the same way or whatever. Um, so I'm sitting there, and I'm crying. <laughs> like, not the ugly cry completely, but I was, you know, emotional because it was really, like, when they when the lady brought the shoes up to me, like, I, I couldn't even open the bag. Like, all the people like, open the bag. I, I couldn't even do it because it was just like I, like I was going to freak out and catch the Holy Ghost and just, you know, just fall out right there. Oh, so I need to just pull it together for a moment. So they finally, anyway, so she's walking out and as she's walking out. She is grabbing everybody's hands around the thing and um, she put her hands together. You know, Oprah does that. She put her, and she pointed them at me and she nodded. Um, Maybe the three people around me felt like she was nodding at her as well. But for me, I felt like that mess was directly to me. And all y'all have been sitting in the audience at the crib watching Oprah had felt that moment where Oprah said something in the camera. He was like, holy snaps. Oprah is talking to me at the crib in my house. <laughs> but in that moment, sitting in the studio with her, I really felt as if we connected. And I don't know if she felt that. I don't know what it was, but I know that it was good and it was amazing. And I am eternally grateful. Even if she had never given me the shoes, even if she, had, whatever. I'm so thankful for the beloved Mrs. Oprah Winfrey. You are my my Angelou. You are my Mary Tyler Moore. You are it for me, Oprah. And one day, I promise you this, I will make you so so proud. This is Sister TV. If ain't nobody told you today, first of all, you need to tell yourself because if Oprah gave me some shoes, baby, anybody can be anything. <laughs> but if you ain't told yourself today, please take a moment and tell yourself, but I'm going to tell you right now, sister, brother, everybody, I love you. It's your girl, Sister TV. Rate, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful, blessed day. Go get it. Do it. Whatever you want. Ask and ye shall receive. Be blessed.